Hello, beta testers. In the background for this video, I'm going to showcase some Batman-inspired art that I've created, as well as some gameplay with Dia on Ivy and me on Batman. Like, subscribe, and comment if you're into it. One thing that thoroughly upsets defenders is the fact that eight years is a long time, and that a microtransaction game would need to be developed as a microtransaction game to take advantage of every avenue to nickel and dime players with focus being taken from other departments to maximize gun, costume, you name it, screen time for whatever items that they intend to sell you. Shills like to counterpoint arguments that no one reasonable is even making. No one's refuting that Sushi Squad could be a good game especially considering how low the bar has been set as of late. But are good games impervious to failure? Star Wars Battlefront 2 was so greedy that after a boneheaded response to backlash, players said no. So loudly, so profoundly, that the feedback set a Guinness record. Battlefield 2042 screwed up classes, removed scoreboards from a shooter. So players said, no. Halo Infinite lost its mind for getting old maps charging to change colors, making it so the only way to progress through the battle pass was through challenges that were made deliberately so annoying that you'd want to skip them hard enough to pay your way through a battle pass that offered challenge skips. This is what you were getting instead of double XP with some of your Mountain Dew or your Doritos. You'd get challenge skips because the battle pass was made so awful that this was now currency. A challenge skip was now valuable. Call of Duty's aggressive skill-based matchmaking killed being able to play in a party with friends, disbanding every lobby after a single match, no map voting, broken mini-map, delayed perks, recycled maps, got caught making it so that the audio and the damage dealt fluctuated based on the player performance. I say again, damage nerfs and buffs on a match-by-match -match basis. Shills journalists that are actually just activists and you're seeing that with Hogwarts Legacy these days they don't play games so they can't rattle off the egregious awful practices that we are seeing actively occurring in these games but I'm letting you know of course there's a correlation between the people deciding let's not play this anymore players say no 73% of Call of Duty's player base stopped. Hmm. This failed wheel reinvention by numbnut, incompetent, and it, it, it deliberately ignoring fan feedback for the sake of greed. The, it, how can you, as a person, open your mouth to fillet this company? You volunteer. Rocksteady can do no wrong in your opinion because they made game you like eight years ago. Can you swap that out for The Witcher? Did that save Cyberpunk's launch? Is this going to have an anime that revitalizes, you know, player? Come on. And if you are hearing these hand up their butt shills with hilarious arguments along the lines of it's optional you don't even have to engage with it i apologize for the brain cells and time that they've cost you listener in failing to understand how impossible it is not to engage with something the game itself was built around tricking the player into investing in so great games can fail please just keep this in mind great gameplay won't save sushi squad from being a paid game with a battle pass enveloped by greed but not greed in what we might consider acceptable and reasonable parameters greed that exceeds what the average gamer will tolerate and ball gargling volunteer cheerleaders can not change this 
I made a list in a previous video because I'm starting to love looking back at how hard these people mishandle these things and I'm forced to consider two things. Thing number one, how sad is it that the most monetizable group was wasted on an inferior, significantly less talented studio tasked with making an obvious Avengers clone? But after everyone hated Avengers, a pathetic attempt to course correct left this trek through sludge of a game somehow worse than it might have been. Old gen versions cancelled, delays, 15 FPS bat cycle rides, good grief, kiss my shiny Jamaican peppermint patties, slow combat, no counter, Warner Brothers Montreal delivered <laughs> just a functionally worse game than eight year old incarnations in this universe, laugh it up Batman, what a shame. But more importantly, how weird is it that choosing to sell skins in Sushi Squad, y'all chose characters like this. Instead of a ratio with two dudes, two girls, and going with Poison Ivy, Enchantress, Harley Quinn, worse still, Harley has to look like this. Because modern gaming, that's going really well for you guys in the Forspoken territory, right? Remember I had some white boy telling me that it's dated and that women shouldn't look like this. Character from a bygone era. I do think the character model was actually like very distracting and not a good That's way. Weird. Hyper proportion. Uh, something or another. Uh, something or another. Something or another. This boy said hyper proportion something or another speaking in favor of Forspoken. He gotta have TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, all of that filtered. Because speaking in the interest of what sells, what is sought after, what tops, I'm not speaking for a bottom boy, a bottom boy. If you think milk toast dumbasses like this baby back bitch are indicative of the average gamer you need to appeal to to fatten your wallet, you got another thing coming. How Ubisoft of you. How Square Enix of you. So in touch. The liars at Crystal Dynamics and the scumbags at WB Montreal, the ones who deliberately hid sub 30 FPS performance until they were forced to admit it, admittedly, are not you, Rocksteady. And I wholeheartedly believe that you guys are talented enough to adequately captivate and secure an audience. But what I'm curious about is why it can't appeal in that kind of blatantly, instantly apparent, leaping off the page, somebody's gonna spend a couple thousands on a figurine to put on a shelf and never touch again, way. What you need to do is grant a bit of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. The kind of stuff that we're seeing in games like Genshin Impact, where we're just swapping from characters and throwing things out onto the field that are creating certain effects that we can then swap to another character, or with the benefit of being able to play multiplayer at the same time, show us you have a master of this sandbox. Show us that you didn't just rent this and you really don't understand how anything works, but please buy your skins. As I've said before, Gotham Knights sort of delivered this weird post-game horde mode, and the sad part was that if you re-released Arkham Knight right now, made it multiplayer, and just gave people a horde mode, they'd go back to that game to play and fund whatever skins you wanted to sell. But I'll be honest, when a guy is named Captain Boomerang, but he and every other hero will be prominently displaying their gun of choice because you gotta see the gun all up on the screen so you know you'll feel like you should buy get that flare right it feels bad like in gotham knights when batgirl post oracle has to do hours of busy work just to unlock the ability to glide for shame for spoken I've listened to Shills lie and claim it's cosmetic only or purely cosmetic when no such statement was made. The article that so kindly allows whomever spoke to them to remain anonymous claims very specifically that the battle pass will be cosmetic focused. The kind of focus that I'm making it apparent to anybody listening is being pulled from certain departments to focus on this microtransaction shit. And I wouldn't have a big problem if you can meet some of these people halfway and make it so everybody wasn't going to be ugly. Yeah, I'm saying. Thing number two is me calling your attention to Hogwarts Legacy. 
They showed a lot of gameplay. Gameplay that lines up with exactly what fans eat and breathe. They said, yeah, sure, whatever. Give me the craziest version. I don't care the price. Let me say this again. I pre-ordered the deluxe edition of Hogwarts Legacy and I do it again. Yeah, there are other elements that factored into my decision. But I'm getting what I'm looking for. Even if it doesn't work at launch, I know eventually the walking up and down in Hogwarts Castle, the soaring over the countryside on the damn broom, you should have been getting all of this attention by just allowing Superman to fly around the way the internet was wetting their pants when Unreal Engine 5 was showcased by Fortnite's developer. But instead, here we are. James Gunn said that the games can get a doggy game, you can get a crypto game, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. The black and white fact quite literally is. To the question of, are people getting what they want out of Rocksteady Sushi Squad, the answer is no. The general sentiment surrounding Sushi Squad is, eh, and that Rocksteady thinks that they've the luxury of time. Especially with games like Spider-Man 2 looming on the horizon. And who knows what announcements could get made. You hear this music in the background? It's from Sucker Punch's Ghosts of Tsushima. And they could announce something coming too. You know what I'd like? Because I don't mind a battle pass. But when the characters are fugly, as you extend your hand for more, are you insane? I still remember the taste of vomit from that Avengers game. That's finally shutting down after the shills defended skins are content too. You can't convince people back into the pool once they know it's full of piss. Any fan, gamer, consumer, investor would want to at a glance be able to tell that this thing appeals, that it has a hook, that it can really dig into people. In the interest of security and stability, consistency, in the way of income, to fund future endeavors. Demonstrate that your project appeals to at least trick people into security. Or what fucking purpose would they have to spend on you? How long a live service looks like it'll fucking last? is obviously a factor in whether or not people are going to dive in. The high speeds of Fortnite, Genshin, and Destiny. How foolish you'd look if you dropped some dial-up on that ass. Yeah, the industry really is lazy right now. And after garbage like Rise of Skywalker, and now with Velma and She-Hulk, it is so blatantly apparent that the people working on these things don't just have much less passion than anybody watching it but have open disdain that they can't wait to demonstrate they're 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 happily ruining these things with and you're catering to these freaks these freaks are inside your studio and if this is how it has to go rocksteady this is how it has to go the association with marvel's avengers is worse than falling face first into a pile of cow droppings and it won't come off easy when I see this busted Harley, I think immediately to the knockoff Avengers a year out from that game. We called it out then too, and they tried to crank that. It's because they don't look at the MCU characters. When I look at this busted Harley, I consider the canceled Batgirl movie. And how this designer could honestly use a figurative slap for taking DC's most popular girl and reducing her in the interest of modern woke foolishness. I said the only way that this design could make sense is if it were deliberately bad to incentivize people to spend even more than the cost of admission on, you know, unlocking maybe a, a more form-fitting or iconic pretty look for Harley Quinn. The same type that you were knocking out of the park when we assume your studio was staffed with much less woke people. Where you fall on your opinion of this design is irrelevant. What you should be is mature enough to admit full stop that this way, my way, makes more money. 
Accidentally losing money is one thing, but deliberately doing it in the face of backlash makes you Crystal Dynamics. And if you're trying to sabotage your own game, waiting longer to showcase Harley, Poison Ivy, potentially any furry characters or enchantress you might got kicking around back there, it truly is the way to go to just, you know, stay uninteresting. I take offense. To the idea of beautiful models, likenesses, uh, the abilities of mocap artists being toned down because of some insecure bitch in your studio that's injecting her lonely misery into this project because the men couldn't possibly see what they know would work. You know that wheel would work better if it was square. You're going to make the wheel square again? Marvel's Avengers and Gotham Knights didn't teach y'all the right lessons. You need to lead properly. My issue is not, oh no, a battle pass. It's, oh, a battle pass and y'all looking like this? Come on, man. I dare the character designs to be worse than Arkham Knight for Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, but expect people to pay? Whew. It's going to happen all over again. And are we going to have to have discussions about models and proportions? Because they're going to be making people frumpy. Oh. How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all of your favorite franchises go down in flames? Feels great. <laughs> but James Gunn said he need everything to be connected and all the actors to be the same and all the stuff. Oh my god. Do you think he's trying to get up in, in, in Sushi Squad right now? You think he's trying to affect that? Think he comes out of nowhere and goes, Listen, I'm James Gunn. And uh, we're delaying the game. So we can get my my actors in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'd make it better. Why is Harley ugly? I'd love that. I'd love that. I think we all would. The worst part is there's no part of me that even thinks that Rocksteady is, oh, a, a figuratively hostage and the publisher's forcing them to do all of these things and they're secretly still based and they're actually making the characters ugly to make it so that we don't feel like spending. Please, man. Please. Sefton left. It's a pretty big, it's a pretty big, you know? What's he going to go do right now where the the him departing was necessary to let everybody? You know how many times people would go do some things, but they just keep it hush for right now. We wouldn't want it to look weird, but y'all went full look weird here. Pretty great. I, you know, I can't wait to see where it goes, but uh, these are my thoughts and they're going to evolve over time and as I've said before, you know, we're two weeks away from that battle pass thing No, no, no statement So As I got Ivy behind me with Dia here right now on a beautiful Fortnite skin deep ass seam When they reveal Ivy because that Wonder Woman already looks a little bit whatever you know what i mean wonder woman y'all taking feminine icons and making them more butch more masculine less appealing but by your product i must show you that the pendulum is swinging i will articulate I don't care how vicious it comes off. I'm not here to be your friend. I don't know what hand jobs you've been receiving from people that are calling themselves journalists, but we are going to tell the truth. And if the truth isn't the nicest thing that you've ever heard, guess who's not to blame for it? Ladies and gentlemen, I love you. Thank you for watching. Apologize for getting a little passionate, but hilariously, it's effortless for me. And some of these people that are getting paid, they couldn't summon it if their life depended on it. It's fucked up, right? You know? No music in them, no rhythm. Milk toast. It's just lame, boring. You know? Sit down and write, right? <laughs> no disrespect, no disrespect. A little bit of disrespect, so. You guys take it easy.